Yeah, I, I do have one more question for like for the average retailer who's like brand new. Um, I like to try to ask questions so people who are watching the show who are brand new who want to get into investing so they have an idea what to do in the process of analyzing a company. Now, obviously, you, you work on Wall Street. You guys have some tools that probably the average retail investor doesn't have to analyze companies. But for a person who's a like brand new, do you have any suggestions on where they should start, what website they can possibly utilize, and where they should even begin to analyze and determine whether a company is good or not? Okay. So let's walk through like a quick process, right? A thought process of a company from like a fundamental level, right? So we have said company. Let's take McDonald's, for example, right? So like you have McDonald's. Everybody knows it. You eat there. You're familiar with it, right? So the first thing, you go to the 10K and the 10Q, right? The 10K yearly report, 10 quarter report, right? And you look in like the business portion of it, right? To see what they're afraid of. A lot of times I don't need to read like a million pages. What they're afraid of and what they're investing in, right? I need to know who their competition is, how they make money. So McDonald's is a real estate company that sells hamburgers. That's what the, who they are. You look at that those reports, right? So now I get okay. They own all right. They own forty thousand locations globally. They you know they have a lot of real estate. Okay, competition, Wendy's, right? You start looking at who they compete with. Okay, I started to get an idea just in that, right? It will tell me where they are from a manager standpoint. So for example, if I bought a house in a really bad neighborhood, let's say it was a steal, got a house, hundred thousand dollars house. Five bedrooms, five bathrooms, three car garage, pool, but it's in a really bad neighborhood. And with my first paycheck, I go out and I buy twelve hundred dollars of, of of Jordans. What would to you? What would be the first thing I, I should buy? A security system, right? I got I got the asset that I just bought, yeah. right? So if I look at that section and they say, "Hey, we're afraid of X, Y, Z," but then I go look at at their expenditures and I see that they're not doing anything to fix that problem. That tells me a lot about management, right? Like, yo, you don't really care. Like, you're just saying that. But it makes me look at your competition. So when I learn one stock, I can learn about or be aware of other stocks. If I learn about McDonald's, then I probably will have some idea of who Domino's, Chipotle, Starbucks, Wendy's are, right? And if I start to get into that story and that story doesn't look as appealing. So now, okay, so we start with the name, 10K, 10Q, right? I start going on YouTube and looking at the company talk, the CFO. I type in CEO or so-and-so. I look at what questions they answer, what they don't answer, how they answer them, what they talk about, why they bring them on. You could pull up series of years of CNBC interviews or different interviews with CEOs, CFOs to get an idea of who this guy is, what their background is, right? So, okay, was this guy always in this space? Uh, is he brand new to this company? Is he brand new to this space? People love AMD. Why? Because Lisa Sue has a PhD in whatever they do, right? Like she, she went to school for it. So like not, she knows the space well. Okay, I look at that. Now I can look at earnings reports or I can listen to earnings calls. I'm sorry. Right? So I, I got the company. I searched the 10K or 10Q. I looked up some interviews to get an idea of who the management is or just some form of them talking. Now I can listen to earnings calls. Before we even get into all this super data minutia, I can have a roundabout idea of what's going on or what the temperature is, right? Like, that's all I want to know. If I'm going to a different city, I'm going to see what the weather is. Why? Because I need to know what to pack. If I'm going to invest in a company, I need to know what the temperature is around that company from a sentiment, performance, how they're presented, Right, what they're talking about on their earnings calls to investors, the questions they're answering, what they're not answering, where their holes are, where their strengths are, what they need to do to get better. Before I even dig into the actual data, I do my homework there. Right, like that's the thing. When we go, when you're single, right, and you go on Tinder, whatever site, and you find a girl that's cute, you're gonna go look at all her pictures, right? You're not gonna just be like, oh, let me look at one picture. No, you know, I think she's cute. Let me learn more about her. She likes puppies and you start looking at the profile and trying to figure out all this information from this one person that you don't even know but you do all this deep dive on this one person but you refuse to do the same thing when it comes to investing your actual real capital right so those four steps just in itself help to give you an idea of not only what's going on in this company currently but also who their competition is so maybe i like chipotle's story better maybe after looking inside i'm like oh you know what let me see what they're talking about over here it allows me to have 
a more fun time researching because now I've learned, I don't know about, but I'm aware of four or five different companies in this space. So it helps for me as an investor to feel more comfortable that, okay, I have an idea of what's going on. I don't know everything, but it allows me to pick and choose my way of how I want to invest. Does that make sense? Before getting into all no, the absolutely. Hard- yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, I, however, when it comes to like listen to the CFO and the CEO, how much weight would you put on what they are actually saying? Because my theory is that you're not going to have a CEO or a CFO who's going to publicly say, ah, my company is not really doing that well. They're not going to sit there and downplay their company. Typically, they want to, you know, get people invested in their company. They're going to hype it up a little bit more than the reality of things. I like to put more weight on the 10 K and that's one of the reasons why I'm asking you this because that okay. was one of the conversations that I brought up when it came to Palantir. I look at the 10 K and, and okay. I brought that up in Palantir and people are saying, Oh, I'm, I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm talking about. I need to look deeper into um, the company. I did look into the company and it doesn't matter to me what the CEO was saying, what the data is showing me and what the 10 K is showing me is saying is completely opposite of what they're saying publicly. Yeah, so, so I think what, I how think much weight both, you put on that? So I, I put more weight in tonality, right? If I if I hit you up and it's a Monday and your kids have been wilding, your wife's getting in there, I say, Mark, how you doing? <sighs> Man, I don't tell you, right? If I hit you up on a Friday and you just got paid, your family went on a vacation and left you home by yourself and you could do what you want for the weekend. Yo, everything's great, right? So I can hear the inflection in the voice of the CEO when he's answering questions, CFO, in terms of what their tone is or their sentiment is, right? You, you can still tell me the company's great, but if you say it in a way that's not believable, it kind of gives me you know, some pause, but that takes time, right? That's an experience thing. I think you're listening it to, you're listening to an earnings call to kind of get the lingo, right? Like you're listening to these interviews. You may not necessarily learn anything if you're brand new, but you're learning a new language. Um, you know, in the NFL, every playbook kind of sounds different, right? In terms of the language, but the plays are kind of similar. And so sometimes it takes a guy a longer time to learn a playbook because he's coming from a different system. He, you got you to listen for different words and cadences and, and nuances, right? So in our everyday life, where, you know, some acronyms or different things you hear, you're not going to hear every day with your friends. So you have to get yourself accustomed to hearing the new vocabulary so that your brain processes it faster. So I don't say listen to earnings calls because they're going to tell you everything. I'm saying listen to this stuff because after a period of time, use EPS, but you know, you know what it means. I don't have to tell you what EPS means, right? I don't have to tell you what operating leverage is. Right. I don't have to tell you certain keywords, terms, definitions, because your brain picks it up. And the faster you pick it up, the faster you make decisions. I think the 10K is good to look at because it tells you. But again, they on the earnings call are going to address that 10K. So they think about it. Okay, they said this here. But what are they saying here? Right. Like they said they're going to fix this. But on the call, they keep on not acknowledging it. Your wife asked you to fix the garbage disposal two weeks ago, and every time she brings it up, yeah, but now it's cold out. You see, you change the subject because you don't feel like changing the garbage disposal. <laughs> no, no, but like you saw this, and after a while, you listen, dog. What's good with this garbage disposal? Like you told me two weeks. Like so, I think you have to use real life skills. I think like investing, right, is a real life skill because we invest every day. Who you talk to is an investment in your time and energy. What you eat is an investment in your health. Right. Investing in the stock market. The only thing that changes is the currency. Most people value money as the highest currency in the world rather than time, rather than energy, rather than health. They place these all under money and they're willing to risk any of them just to have money to buy material things or just say they have money. Right. So I think you're right in saying, hey, look at the 10K and really digest that. But I also think once you do go see what they're saying. And get yourself because also you're reading stuff that you don't understand, right? So you're reading words that you haven't heard. So that's why I mean, you got to do both because you're able to listen. So now those words, when you read them, they come off the page. If I'm reading all these words I've never heard before and this it's very confusing, I'm not going to retain anything. So I read this report. I've retained nothing. You have to do both to help your learning, your, your learning curve. You don't have to take both as gospel, but you at least have to do both to get your knowledge base, your comfortability up. You know, like that, that's, that's what I would say to that. Another thing, Mark, remember when people, how much they put in into something and position bias. And that's very common. It's very common in options trading. You're leveraged too heavy. You start looking for positive things for the company because you own calls. And then when you're in too much 
you get emotional when people argue because you know what Q said when he's having an argument what happens okay i disagree with you but you know what i understand your point of view but what happens on twitter or youtube you can say whatever and get away with it because there's no accountability yeah like and there's no, like you might say nothing to you like what if i call if i get in the comments and start wilding you don't know me you can't find me yeah. what's gonna happen nothing and so yeah. some people like the joker in dark knight they just want to see the world burn right somebody they just show up just to cause chaos and so again like a lot of this stuff has to deal with like your confidence in you, right? And you're the most confident in yourself when you're working on yourself. So we've all been in school where we study for a test and we walked in and we was like, yo, now nah, bring that test over here. And we've all walked in the classroom, not study for a test. Y'all hope the teacher forget that we got a test today because I'm not ready for that test. And your confidence level is different. So a lot of the stuff that you see in terms of marketing is really just uh, self-help or stuff for people who have low self-esteem with a money-making twist, right? That's all it is. It's like, hey, Life suck. You make twenty thousand dollars a year. You're living check to check. Do this. You make a million dollars. You're great. And it's like all it is is like motivational speaking. And then at the end of it, that oh, you, you can make some money. Like they they got you because you were walking around with low self esteem because you couldn't buy some Dior's that cost twelve hundred. That's why you feel bad. Not any other reason because some material thing you can't take with you. And the crazy part is they'll, they're going to come out with a new shoe tomorrow that's better than that one. And you're going to want that one too. So it really has to do with how you feel about you as a person and your process. A lot of people don't work on themselves and the investment is not in investing your money and time into somebody else. The investment is yourself. Most people treat themselves like mashed potatoes or like string beans when they're the steak and they treat other people like they're the steak, right? They treat so-and-so like he's the porterhouse and they treat themselves like garlic mash. No, no, no. You're the porterhouse. He's got or he or she is garlic mash. Treat them accordingly. We don't do that because of the way society is set up on the Internet, because I can be whatever I want. And if I don't get a certain number of likes or a certain number of a certain amount of attention, I feel bad because I'm not worth it. That's the way it's been set up. So now when you introduce all these things and all this noise, people are easily influenced to go left, you know, when they probably should have went right. Yeah, very true. And so once you analyze, like the you look over the 10K, you listen to the earnings calls, um, what's your next step would you recommend moving forward since uh, you have kind of like the understanding of the company? I want to know what the sentiment is on the name. I want to find out what the street thinks. Again, like being able to weaponize your fan base, to weaponize your, being able to weaponize your thoughts. So Warren Buffett bought Centelese, right? CE, a stock. Stock was up like 6% in the pre-market one day. And my buddy was like, yo, CE's up. Why? And I'm like, I don't know. So I like looked. I'm like, oh, because Buffett bought it. <laughs> it's a good company, but like it was up in the pre-markets because Buffett, because like Buffett bought it. He's able to weaponize his thought process. People respect him so much that whatever he does, they'll follow behind him, right? Most people can't weaponize their thought process. So you have to understand what big money thinks. Because you can buy a stock and say, I'm buying the stock because they got strong fundamentals and this, that, that. But if big money is like, oh, I don't really like you that much. It don't matter. You're just holding on to a stock that's going to trade sideways because the people that have or the companies that have money don't feel away. So I need to know, again, after that process, right, of picking a stock, right, 10K, 10Q, right, figuring out who the competition is, looking at the business, the risk, listening to earnings calls. Going on YouTube wherever, and finding interviews of C-suite level management and kind of getting a, a vibe for that. Okay, what is the sentiment on the name based on where we are economically, based on where we are in the time of the year, based on where that company is or what they're trying to accomplish, right? Because sometimes the sentiment doesn't match the performance of the stock, and that could be good or bad. Sometimes there's not enough sentiment on a name, and if you own that, when things turn around, the stock is up 30%. Sometimes the sentiment is too overspoken on a name and you grab it at its high and it goes back down 23%. So you have to understand the value of that. I would say next in your process. Okay, because maybe I could wait or maybe I should wait or maybe I, I should be more steadfast in my research. Like you're going to think it's a tug and pull, right? Because seasonality is a real thing. So like when you see most of the time prior to like this, just take this year out, right? Most of the time, in that May, June, July, you see a transfer from goods to services. You see a transfer from people buying goods to them 
traveling and buying services, whether it's cruises and airplanes and hotels. One, you see that transfer. Now, obviously, the economy is a little different this year, but that's a normal seasonality thing that normally happens that maybe some people bank on. Okay, around this time, I'm going to get rid of this stock. I'm going to start buying. I'm going to start inching my way into this stock because people are naturally, they're off in the summertime. They're going to do more family vacation. They're going to do this, travel, demand, different things, right? So like, those are the things you're looking for. The sentiment will tell you that because they'll say, okay, I have high sentiment in Delta. Well, why? Well, because it's this time of year, people are traveling. Prices are up. People are still buying this. We're booked. Then 2019, you start seeing sentiment change. Now, the performance may not be be there but the sentiment has changed so there's a positive sentiment on airlines prior to the change of the seasons when was it when was there ever a, a positive sentiment in the last six months it wasn't well if the season changes sentiment will there be the same level of sentiment in september maybe they'll say oh your holiday travel and christmas right like it may only be for that small amount of time so maybe i don't want to own that name today because i think that the seasonality of sentiment will only be there from June to September. Maybe I want to put it on my watch list Mm -hmm. and maybe I want to track that and learn more about the company in the space because I think that's interesting. I don't have to invest. You see what I'm saying? Like that's, I'm creating a watch list of stuff. I send my friends, Oh, look at this stock. I'll send you, I'll be like, look at this stock. It's not a million stocks. It's names that I think are interesting. I'm like, Oh, it's interesting name. I, I think that it's cool. I'm not telling you to buy it. I'm not saying go buy. Hey, I think the story is interesting. There could be more here. It's your job to figure out whether or not you agree, you like, you don't, whatever you want to do. It's not my job to tell you what to buy. It's based on what I've seen. I think there's something interesting here. I don't know if it's proper. I have to do more work, but same thing. I have a watch list. This is what I'm watching. Until something is actionable, that's okay. You know what? I have to move on this. Correct. And just to be clear for everyone to understand, he said, what is the streets thinking? He does not mean random YouTubers. Okay, it means actual like analysts, people who work on on Wall Street. 